So what we're interested in in our group is, is looking at um, what we refer to as masking risk. And, and masking risk is really talking about screening mammography and the fact that we recognize that breast density, which is shown here, um, so see if I can pull up the marker. Um, breast density uh, in a mammogram uh, actually reduces the detectability of uh, the lesions that are, in, that, that are in the breast. And so this is an example of four different categories of breast density from um, essentially a fatty breast or non-dense breast all the way over to a very, very dense breast. And a dense breast basically has a lot of normal fibroclines or tissue and it makes it really hard to see uh, lesions in that. And if you do a study, and these numbers are fairly typical, um, where you look at the sensitivity of screening mammography, in the fatty breast, uh, we find a lot of the cancers that are there. But when we look at the dense breast, uh, the sensitivity goes, goes way down. And depending on jurisdictions and different screening programs, these numbers may vary a little bit, but really um, you see this uh, sort of consistent trend where in the dense breast, mammography just doesn't do as well. And we want to address that and be able to um, uh, deal with that and sort of improve screening mammography by, or screening programs by improving on sensitivity in the dense breast. And so we believe that the problem with this is it's due to something called masking. And masking is just really hiding that lesion in that, in that tissue background. And so when masking occurs, it's when the lesion is either hard or difficult or actually impossible to visualize um, uh, when it's obscured by the normal parenchyma. Uh, those overlapping structures. And the result is, is that the texture makes it hard to see the, the, the lesion in that texture. And it also reduces the contrast between the lesion itself and that background tissue. And this is just sort of shown here in simulation. So what I've got here is just a couple of different dots representing, uh, or blobs, I guess, representing uh, a simulated lesion in different artificial backgrounds that sort of mimic uh, what you see in a, in a mammogram. And when you have a certain kind of texture, the, the, the lesion itself is really easy to see, actually. Uh, but when you start changing that texture and making it more and more like what you see in a, in a natural mammogram, those lesions disappear. And the interesting thing here is, is on each of those rows, the contrast of that lesion to the average in the background is actually exactly the same. So it's not just contrast. It's something about conspicuity and the complexity of the, uh, the tissue in the background. So the result is a false negative. It's a miss. We missed the cancer. Um, the one meter... Um, uh, comes back a little later on with the lump in her breast, or we find it uh, much delayed in diagnosis at the next screening round. And so we have reasons for that. It will be masking by density. It's either partially or completely invisible. Uh, miss, which is a reader error, and that could be due to experience, or it could be simply that that's a very hard mammogram to read. Um, minimal signs, meaning that the cancer was very small, and maybe it was there when you look at the next mammogram. Um, or it could be, in fact, a true interval cancer. And these are the relatively rare events where the cancer wasn't there, and it, and it essentially grew and developed to a, a minimal size that was detectable at the next screening round. So the result is, is that you get these interval cancers. And these are cancers that appear, uh, usually because of a lump, um, uh, after the negative screen and uh, sometime before their next screen, or you get um, cancers that show up much more delayed. They're called the other cancers, um, but essentially they're an interval cancer that also fall between the, the screening rounds. And the other thing is delayed diagnosis, where it's more than two years after where they go to the next screening round, they don't have any physical symptoms of, uh, of a cancer, but that cancer is now found on that mammogram, but it's much larger and a much higher stage. And just to give you an idea, this is a mammogram that might be shown to, to a radiologist. Um, does anybody know where the cancer is? Let's, let's, pick, let's pick, a, pick a number. Pretend it's a clock, and so we'll go around here. Anybody say it's at, say, 12 o'clock? 3 o'clock? So we got one for 12 o'clock, two o'clock, six o'clock, six down here, four o'clock. Yeah. So in fact, it's just like a Where's Waldo, or in the UK, it's Where's Wally. Um, the cancer's up there. And our radiologists actually wouldn't have had much difficulty with this one, but you can see how difficult it might be um, just in, in general. It's just that we're not looking at a thing that's really that much different from the, the, the tissue around it. Um, and uh, as you can see very carefully, there's Waldo in the, in the background. And it's a very similar task. It's just that um, in both cases, the contrast is really good. Uh, we can see the lesion, but um, because of the complexity of the background, it's really hard to pick that lesion out. So a lot of the stuff we built is to develop a masking index, and, and Sarah's going to talk after us um, uh, about that. And we based this on an original collaboration with the uh, uh, University of Virginia with uh, Dr. Jennifer Harvey. 
I won't go into the details here, but uh, we have a fairly small data set of about two, uh, 700 cancers, of which um, <clears throat> um, 90 were identified as masked, meaning they weren't found on the mantle, and 186 of them were, were, were confirmed to be found uh, on, a, on, a, on a screening mammogram. We have been working at getting a second cohort. We have a lot of data sets we can uh, evaluate the masking index better. And here we've uh, just recently gone through at Sunnybrook. Uh, we have 120 cases identified over four years. Um, and we had to go through radiology reports. And, and anybody who's done this, um, if they're not structured reports, they're very, very difficult to parse. Um, and so we used a little bit of natural language processing and essentially what's referred to as tokenization. So it picks up words that go together. So for example, if, the, if invasive ductal carcinoma was there, that's an important word token. Um, the difficulty, of course, is, is it could say signs of malignancy, or it could say no signs of malignancy, and we have to separate those as well. So it, it becomes a lot of uh, back and forth between the tokenization, which is sort of automatic, and then actually reading the, uh, the actual sentences that are there. And from there, we essentially got another data set now that's essentially about the same size as our original data set, and we're just starting to evaluate this, these images now. Uh, we have currently uh, two models uh, for a masking index that basically gives us the risk uh, of masking in uh, each of the mammograms. The first one is basically a handicrafted um, sort of uh, model based on something referred to as detectability. And that's essentially a measure of image quality or lesion conspicuity of a simulated lesion in that mammogram. And then the second one is, is much more interesting or sophisticated and it's based on AI. It's a CNN uh, deep learning model that actually classifies as mammograms either as high risk of man masking or low risk of masking. And we're testing that on the Sunnybrook cohort and there's a number of questions uh, that we're asking on that. And then what's uh, very uh, exciting is, is that this is starting to be used by others. And so in, in Dr. Fiona Gilbert's lab, we're gonna hear a little bit more about this uh, from, from Sarah Hickman. Um, so I'm gonna leave it there and, and turn it over to Sarah. Uh, and she can continue. Um, thank you very much for having me speak today and thank you James um, for that introduction and background into the, the collaboration. Um, so I'm Sarah Hickman, um, I'm a PhD student at the University of Cambridge, a medical doctor by background, um, I'm taking a PhD and I'll go into a bit more detail about the work we've been carrying out in collaboration with Sunnybrook Research Institute with Professor Martin Yaffe and Dr James Main Price. Um, so the title of this talk is A Masking Risk Index, an Evaluation to Guide Supplemental Imaging for Breast Screening. Um, and this work was funded by Cancer Research UK. Um, so in the UK, uh, we have the National Breast Screening Programme. Um, and this includes women routinely being screened every three years, age 50 to 70. And in that screen, we obtain a two view mammogram. So as shown over here, we um, have the CC view, so the um, cranial caudal view and the medial lateral oblique view um, of the right and left side and that forms the whole um, mammographic image which is then read by two radiologists or radiographers or breast clinicians who are expert readers. So from 2017 to 2018 in the UK 1.83 million women were screened as part of this program and 67,604 women were called back following their mammogram for further assessment. Cancers were detected at a rate of 8.1 per thousand, with interval cancers, as James detailed, um, occurring at a rate of 2.9 per thousand. So in the UK, this is where someone has, um, a woman has a normal mammographic screen, and then in between that three-year screening interval, um, the woman develops breast cancer. And although the National Breast Screening Programme aims that 80% of the lesions it detects are less than 15 millimetres in size, such that they're small, in the UK, in that 2017 to 2018 um, cohort, only 51.4% of lesions met that small size threshold. And as James has also very nicely detailed, the density in women's mammograms varies greatly, um, as we can see by these four mammograms. Uh, and with increased breast density, this both increases a woman's breast cancer risk, but also decreases that mammographic sensitivity. And that in part, that decrease in mammographic sensitivity is due to masking. And so what we wanted to study if cancers found in dense breasts were likely to be larger. And so to reduce the small size, uh, so to reduce that size of breast cancers that we saw previously, this poses the question whether women with dense breasts should receive supplemental imaging. And that supplement, supplemental imaging could be an MRI, a contrast enhanced mammography or ultrasound. 
So the purpose of this study was to test if dense breast is observed by a higher masking risk index were associated with a larger breast cancer. So what is the masking risk index? So as, as again, James has very nicely detailed, it's developed at Sunnybrook Research Institute and it uses raw mammographic data, um, creating density maps to calculate detectability and texture metrics. Assigning a per view score. Um, so as we can see from these four um, right-sided CC mammograms at 0 0.1, we have lower masking, ranging up to 0 0.5 with higher masking. So following the acquisition of that per um, view score, we adjust for age and then calculate a per side score, taking the CC and MLO views um, and combining them to, um, to calculate the average. Um, and again, this beautiful animation created by um, Dr. James Main Prize demonstrating the creation of these density maps where brighter areas indicate lower masking and darker areas indicating higher masking. When we were planning this study, we set a cutoff threshold for that masking risk index that ranges from zero to one um, with a cutoff of 0 0.3. Um, and that was chosen based on previous studies conducted, looking into the feasibility of a risk stratified breast screening program using the masking risk index conducted at Sunnybrook Research Institute. Um, so this cutoff of 0 0.3 indicated higher masking, um, and this was for the efficient selection of women um, to result in the improved detection of interval cancers. And so these previous studies have demonstrated that if we set that cost or threshold at 0 0.36, we would identify 18% of the population who would benefit from supplemental imaging to detect 50% more interval cancers. And if we reduce that masking risk index threshold, we would identify more women who would benefit from supplemental imaging detecting more interval cancers. And so we chose um, 0 0.3 to go in between. The data set we used for this um, study was the Tommy, um, Tommy cohort, um, an ethically approved previously collected data set consisting of 352 cases and 361 lesions. Um, these were all invasive cancers um, and they had the feature as demonstrated on these mammograms of either a circumscribed or speculated mass. We took only the contralateral side to the cancer, so the cancer-free side, um, to be analysed by the masking risk index so that the lesion didn't interfere at all with the creation of those density maps. And the median lesion, si um, lesion size was 30 millimetres with 208 lesions less than 15 millimetres in size. The median age of this cohort was 64 years uh, and we had more speculated than circumscribed masses. So the initial results of our study demonstrated that a higher masking risk index was associated, was associated with larger lesion size, as shown by this table here, where at lower masking we have more lesions of smaller size than larger size, and at higher masking we have more lesions of larger size than smaller size. And further demonstrated by the use of violin and box plots, where we can demonstrate at higher masking the median lesion size is larger than at lower masking. And lastly, using a linear mixed effects model, taking into account um, as random effects if there were multiple lesions in each breast, the side of the cancer as well as the site at which the mammogram was obtained. Um, to demonstrate that a 0.1 increase in masking risk index, we expected to see a rise in lesion size of 5.6%. So to conclude, we can say that higher masking risk index was associated with larger breast cancers, and the masking risk index could therefore provide a method that women attending screen could benefit from by identifying women who would benefit most from supplemental imaging. Um, so many thanks to the University of Cambridge Department of Radiology, Sunnybrook Research Institute, especially James and Martin, um, and Cancer Research UK for their help in conducting this work. Um, so if anybody has any questions, be very happy to answer them. Um, and James, I'll pass back over to you.